Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I am going to unbox and test this welder from a company named Best Arc. So the brand is Best Arc. The model is the MIG 145. This is the uh, 9 series. There's also a 145.7 series. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two. I am not being paid for this review, but Best Arc did provide this unit to me free of cost in order to do this review. But as far as the review is concerned, there's no strings attached, um, so I'll be able to give an open and honest review. So let's dig into this guy. All right, let's see what's included in this welder. Custom cut foam packaging. An accessories box that I'll get into in just a minute. This thing is a lot smaller than I was expecting it to be. So here's our little welder here. Okay, first impressions. It seems it seems decent. Let's go ahead and see what's included in this accessories box here. Okay, so this is a gas hookup hose for MIG. Some Teflon tape, um, another drive roller for the wire feed system, and some uh, welding tips. We have a 220 to 120 volt adapter. Uh, I didn't even look, so yeah, the, the main plug here is a 220. I have 220, but I don't have this, uh, this style of plug. So I guess I'll have to use the 120 conversion like this. Here's your ground clamp. And it's a it's a pretty adequate one. It has the, the the copper braid inside it to really help get a good ground connection to whatever you're working on. So that's nice. And then you got a stinger lead for stick welding. And I know it didn't go over the specs on this yet. I will in just a minute. Get a spool of. Uh, it doesn't say. I think you get a spool of solid wire and you get a spool of flux core wire because this machine is capable of doing both. This is the flux core, this is the solid. Comes with a little shoulder strap. I mean, this thing is really light. Wouldn't be too hard to carry around. A little wrench for your uh, welding tips. Maybe for some maintenance inside the box. And a manual. Take a look and see what this welder is supposed to do. All the, all the documentation about this welder calls it a MIG TIG stick welder. But everything I've seen so far, I only see the MIG and the stick. Um, Unless they're referring to flux core as TIG, I'm not sure. Uh, there, there may be add-on uh, accessories you can buy to convert this to TIG. Okay, after looking through the manual a little bit, I have uh, gotten some answers to my questions. First of all, there was, if you remember, there was a Generation 7 and a Generation 9, and the difference between those two generations is the Generation 7 comes with the all the accessories to do stick welding and to do gasless flux core welding. The generation, the generation 9 kit which I got also comes with the accessories to hook up to gas to do MIG welding. And this thing is supposed to TIG, but 
It doesn't come with the the right the tungsten holder and the right you know attachments in order to do TIG welding. So we won't be testing that today. We will be testing the other three functions today though. So in order to access the inside of this machine, you just flip a couple of latches and it opens up here. Here is your, your spool holder for your wire spool. And um, it's got a typical uh, MIG tensioning system here. So it's got a quick release and that opens up this arm and you feed your MIG wire into this spring-loaded feeder tube and you run your wire through and then when you lock this down it presses an idler wheel against the drive wheel and that's what pushes the wire out your gun. You can increase or decrease the tension using this knob here. Um, there is also a handy I like this, I don't even have this in my welder that I use, a handy uh, feed wire button here. So you press the button as you're feeding the wire just to get it to feed out, you know, without having to actually activate uh, the trigger on the handle. That's how I have to do it on mine. I have a Harbor Freight Titanium. It's a great welder, but it doesn't have that feature. So around the back, you'll see that there is a port for the gas if you're going to be using gas with your MIG and there is a power switch right here and the power cord comes out the back on the front you have the polarity selector so in order to if you're depending on whether you're doing MIG or TIG and what types of uh, materials you're welding, you'll have to select if you are going, uh, if your electrode is to ground or if your electrode is to positive. Um, I'm not a professional welder. I'm not trained as a welder. Um, I don't know all the details. I just do know that some functions will require this electrode to be in this port and some functions will require it to be in this port. And it's nice that it's uh, easily selectable. And I guess the ground would uh, uh, occupy the other port. And it just, so that's, it just changes the polarity. That's all it does. Digital readout. Um, you can select the different functions from that readout. And you can select the power. Uh, I, I haven't powered it up yet, so I don't know exactly. I'm assuming you're going to have your power output and then you can press a button to change your feed speed, your wire feed speed as well. So to summarize the unboxing, this is what you come with. You come with the welder, you come with an adapter, you get the regular MIG gun, which is it, it seems to be permanently attached. And then if you want to do stick welding, you can use, you could plug the electrode into one of the ports to do stick. And then you got an an okay ground clamp. You know, this isn't the best, in my opinion. Uh, I feel like the, the ground cable gauge is maybe a little on the thin side, but we really don't know what this is capable of outputting yet. Get a shoulder strap, a torch tool, and then you get a hose for hooking up to gas, and you get two spools of wire. Oh, and you get the accessories. You get the extra tips, extra drive wheel, and some Teflon tape for your gas line. So this pretty much has everything that you need to get welding. You will still will, are going to need some other things, right? You're going to need some type of safety for your, you know, your face, a mask, a welding mask. You'll also need gloves and possibly an apron or a coat or something to protect you from splatter. And re it's really helpful to have uh, specialized welding tools. Uh, you can get one like this where it's got a, a little small hammer for chipping off uh, slag and a wire brush. And I, I like my welding pliers, so these help you, you know, they keep the nozzle clean. It helps you uh, pull the cover off the nozzle if you need to. Uh, when it's hot, you can you trim your wire out of the, the, out of the tip of your nozzle before you, you weld. And you can hold down your pieces or, or press two pieces together with this and keep your hands away from the work. So that's enough about 
the unboxing and the setup and everything. Uh, let's uh, weld some metal and see what we can do. Okay, I set up my workspace for welding. Um, I've got all of my PPE right here. I'm wearing uh, leather shoes so the splatter doesn't get to my toes. Um, but I do want to give a couple of disclaimers. First of all, like I've said before, I'm not a welder. Um, for all of you experts out there, I don't need to hear you know, what I'm doing wrong or anything. This is just a demonstration. Um, I'm Really, if you're learning how to weld or if you're a novice like me, as long as you're doing it safely, I say have at it. Now the other issue is that this normally functions as a wood shop. So um, I wouldn't suggest you weld in a wood shop because it doesn't matter how clean you get it, there's always sawdust somewhere. If you have to, I suggest having a fully charged fire extinguisher nearby and uh, be prepared to use it. And then after you're done welding, you probably need to stick around for a half hour just to make sure nothing ignites. That's kind of like a fire watch thing. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I think we're going to go ahead and start with stick welding. In order to set up stick welding, you need to place your ground clamp on the positive socket and you use you plug your stinger into the negative socket. And on the digital readout, you select MMA mode on the screen. Welder is set to 30 amps. Uh, the welder goes up to 105 amps, at least in stick mode. I'm going to use these 1 16th inch electrodes here. This is an E6013. This is just little pieces of old bed frame. So it's not any quality steel or anything. I've literally done stick welding once before in my life. And um, it was just to demonstrate a different welder. So I've got uh, no experience at all. So we're gonna see how well I can make this do what it needs to do. Check my shade level. All right, here we go. Made me jump like a like a newbie. Made a nice little burger weld there. I don't think it I don't think there was any penetration at all. And this material might be too thick for that. Yeah, that 16th inch electrode. I think I need just a little bit of space in between here. See what I can do. Try not to attach it to my steel plate.
see if I did any better. Nope. You know, another thing that occurs to me, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of prep on the surface, as you can see, so. Um, it's only sticking to one side. And it's got pretty decent penetration. I just need to be, you know, I just need to know what I'm doing. I don't think that's going to work. Try this. Definitely not, still not a great looking weld by any means, but I think it's stuck this time. Uh, turning it up did definitely uh, did a better it, it did benefit me um, I'm going to try one more time I'm going to try to fill in this seam right here and uh, then we'll finish up with the stick weld portion of this Kind of learning as I go. All right, so look, this is my second time welding stick, right? I feel like I'm getting somewhere here. That last half inch looks like an actual weld. So I'm going to take that as a win. One last thing I'm going to do before I switch over to something else is I'm going to try a, a larger electrode. So this is a 1 8 inch electrode and the range on this guy is 90 to 140 amps. According to the readout on my machine, I can only get to 105, so we'll see if that's got enough juice to just, you know, get some, get the metal to stick. I don't, I'm not even gonna try to get two pieces together. I'm just gonna try to get the electrode to, to actually puddle on the, on the steel.
can already tell it's more challenging. Okay, so that's more than enough power to run an eighth inch electrode, so that's good. Oops. That's why I pulled the clamp off. We'll let that cool for a little bit. I'll break the slag off and we'll take a look and see, you know, if I'm capable of putting down an actual weld bead. So there's that ugly weld. Um, pretty good penetration. It didn't go all the way through, but it went most of the way through. I actually slowed down toward the end, thinking I was going too fast, but as you can see by the thickness of the bead, I was actually going too slow towards the end. Um, but it did burn in pretty good. Um, so, not too shabby for such a small device. Okay, next I'm going to clear out all of the stick welding stuff. I'm going to switch over to flux core, and we're going to test that out and see how that goes. With the machine turned off and unplugged, we access the wire feed components under this lid. In order to feed the wire, I guess I am going to have to have this guy plugged in and turned on. Let's get the wire spool installed first, and then I'll do that. So you take apart this. It's a thumb screw, a washer, and a spring, and it's the top of the spool. Top of the spool holder, I should say. I'm using the provided spool of flux core wire. Trying to determine if I can recommend this as a beginner-friendly unit. If everything works as advertised, I don't. I wouldn't have any problem suggesting this to anybody as their first welding machine. Okay, so a couple things to note: the spool will want to unspring out. It'll, it's all spooled up tight, and it's going to want to unravel on you on its own. You don't want that to happen, so you got to hold it. Second, you need a clean, straight end in order to feed it into the feed tube here without it getting hung up. Open up the feed system, start pushing it through. Guide it into the hole. Still holding this down because it will unspool itself if you don't put pressure on this spool holder. All right, that's better. Now that I got it loaded, I can close the idler wheel, lock down the tensioning knob. Go ahead and plug it back in and turn it on. I'm still in stick mode, so I need to press this button to get to MIG mode. And it's got gasless selected. My wire size is selected. And then it has a 2T mode and a 4T mode. And I'll try to explain how that works quickly. 
2T mode and 4T mode refer is in reference to the trigger. In 2T mode, the trigger is a momentary button, so this spool will turn as long as you hold down the button. Like that. As soon as you let go of the button, the spool should stop turning, but it's still kind of under spring pressure here, but the spool stops turning once you let go of the button. In 4T mode, you press the button to turn on the spool, and it, it keeps going until you press the button again, and then it stops the spool. So those are the two modes. I prefer 2T, and I'm going to load this spool, or load this wire until it comes out of the tip right here. I'm glad I noticed this. I'm using a MIG tip. You need to change out your tip to another good use of these pliers. Change out your tip to uh, use the correct tip that's for the gasless flux cord wire. And I run my flux core without a nozzle because the nozzle just ends up getting clogged up. And you don't need a nozzle because there's no gas coming out. And feed this wire through. Maybe. I guess a smart thing to do would be to not have the tip on at all until the wire comes through and then you feed the wire, the tip over the wire. That might be why I'm, I'm struggling here. There it is. That's what it was. It was slipping and it's because this wire is too big for a 0.3 tip. Alright, here's a bigger tip. I think it's a 0.4, 0.04. So that's a setting I'm going to have to change on the machine itself. Change it to 0.04. Okay, in order to switch over from stick to flux core, you just remove the stick stinger from the negative port and you take this crossover wire and plug it into the negative port and you're ready to go. So inside the cover is a handy little guide and I'm going to use that to get me started. The uh, metal that I'm welding is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Of course this is all in metric on this machine. So they give me options for two millimeters and four millimeter. Of course what I'm welding is around three millimeter. Um, so I'll just try to figure out where I want to be. It looks like I want to be right around 18 and a half. So Oh, okay, so it, they both change together, so that helps. So, we're going to do 18 and a half. Yeah, and 90 amps. So, we'll see how well that works. I still don't see anything about a feed speed. So, it must be... I don't know, we'll play it by ear, see how well it works. So, from what I understand, one of the benefits of using flux core wire is that you don't have to have pristine surfaces to weld to. To a certain degree, it will burn through rust and maybe a thin layer of paint. Obviously, for best results, you'd want it to be clean, uh, but we'll see how it does on this old rusty bed frame here. As far as the feed speed goes, I think 
I think it auto adjusts based on your uh, voltage and amperage settings. And if that's the case, that would make this super beginner friendly because then you don't, that's one variable you don't have to worry about, but that's only if it works. I need to turn it down, it's burning. All right, I have it set to the uh, settings for two millimeter. one of those I welded and it helded situations. Um, it works. I, I'm not I'm not griping about this. This is all a, a skill issue here. I'm gonna try welding on the back side here a little bit see if I can uh, improve my technique a little bit. It's still burning too hot. Let me turn it down some more. I mean, you can see, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. It's arcing. Um, so, it, I, I don't think the material is coming out fast enough. direction I actually had to turn up everything so it fed more wire and um, I, you know it's, it's not the best weld still but it's a lot better than what I was getting I'm going to try to weld this seam right here see what I can do
this up on the uh, the grinder over here. Okay, there's that ugly first weld. And then I started getting back into the groove with the second weld there. And then there's the third weld. So. Uh, not too shabby. Uh, as far as the performance of the machine goes, uh, very happy with that. It's just a matter of dialing it in, as usual, as it is with most of these things. But um, not a hiccup from the machine. The power felt very consistent. The feed felt very consistent. It does auto-adjust the feed based on the power setting, which is nice for beginners. It's nice for me. Um, so yeah, overall, very satisfied with that. And I'm done for the night. I'm going to do MIG with gas uh, tomorrow. And so I'm going to do my fire watch right now, clean up around the shop, make sure nothing's... Okay, full disclosure, I did have some issues with the test unit that was sent me. Um, and uh, I was sent a second test unit. And I will go into the details about that at the end of this video. But in the meantime... I was able to dial in the flux core a little bit better and get uh, some pretty decent welds in. Uh, this is pretty good for my skill level and uh, they turned out really well. So now I get to go through the process of uh, digging my gas tank out of the back there. I gotta move the beetle out of the way. Pull out the gas tank and I'm gonna hook this sucker up um, to my argon CO2 uh, tank and see how well I can get this to MIG. Uh, I'm guessing the MIG is going to be just as decent. If it can do a good job with uh, the flux core, it's going to be able to do a good job with MIG. But let's go ahead and verify that. Even though this welder did come with a nice hose, and I do mean it's nice. This is much nicer than the gas hose that came with my Harbor Freight welder. Um, and it does come with some Teflon tape. You still, if you have a tank, you're gonna need a regulator. Uh, that's obviously not provided. You'll have to source your own. I got my regulator uh, relatively inexpensively from Amazon. Uh, it does the job, uh, so. I don't think it was too terribly expensive, but it is made out of brass, and so it's going to cost you a little bit of money to get the regulator, and you won't be able to do this without a regulator. So I gotta make sure my gas is completely off. My pressure is at zero on both gauges, so I'll be able to be able to undo this guy right here. I do appreciate that they included some Teflon tape with this package, but I've always been taught that with compression fittings you don't use Teflon tape and that it can have the opposite effect and it would cause a leak instead of stopping a leak. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this in without using Teflon tape. Now I'm simply going to attach it to this port here that says gas in.
and that should do it. Let me go ahead and set up the welder now for solid core welding. The setup on the screen is almost the same as the gasless. You just have to switch between gas and gasless and gas right here on this set point. Looks like you only have the option of using 030 uh, thickness of wire. It seems a little odd only because they give you spare tips for 030 and 035. Um, you know, I've got loaded in my my other welder, uh, O23. And so I don't know what would happen if you tried to run that uh, through this welder since it only appears to have a setting for O30. Okay, I put my O30 nozzle on, a tip on with uh, the nozzle cover for the gas. I've got some very poorly prepped pieces of metal right here just laying against each other. I'm going to slap my ground clamp on here somewhere out of the way. Maybe. I'm going to dial in the settings on the machine according to the chart that's inside the cover and then make adjustments as needed. an ugly weld. I got my shade turned up too high on my helmet too. I can't really see what I'm doing so I'm going to turn that down. Alright all you pros out there. I bet you you already know what I was doing wrong. It helps if you turn the gas on if you intend to weld with gas. I'm actually pretty surprised at how well it did weld without gas. But as you can see, it's just lumpy, you know, booger welds. So let's see, I'm gonna try to do a top pass on this weld that I had already made with the, um, with the gasless. Um, and let's see if uh, I can actually put down a, a clean bead this time. Much better. Nice thick bead. I'm gonna try to maybe do some finesse now here. Weld that end up.
Okay, so that turned out really, really good. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with uh, its ability to MIG weld with gas. Uh, it dialed in a lot easier, a lot quicker than my experience with other welders, which is always nice. I got another gap here I can play with. It's pretty dirty, so we'll see how well that goes. Not too shabby. I think I just need to move. I just need to move the gun faster because I build up a, a whole large amount of weld. Uh, it, it really burns in good though. All right, time to wrap things up. I'll give you my summary after I uh, kind of clean things up around here. So now that I'm done testing this Best Arc MIG 145 multi-process welder. What do I think about it? To be honest, for the price, I am very impressed for what you get and the performance on top of that. The fact that it's dual voltage, but it performs... I, I haven't been able to test it on the 220, but it performs perfectly on 110. I was able to stick weld without a problem. I was able to use flux core wire without a problem and I was able to uh, MIG weld with gas without any problems at all. I feel like I was able to get cleaner welds faster or get the machine dialed in easier than my uh, bigger Harbor Freight machine that I, that I normally use. So that is also a plus. And this thing doesn't weigh anything. It weighs maybe 10, 10 pounds. It's really tiny, portable. So out of the box, this thing is ready to weld. For stick welding, you have to provide your own electrodes, but it already comes with the flux core wire. You can go jump right into uh, flux core welding if you want to do that right away. And then obviously, you don't, you'll need a gas bottle and a regulator to do a uh, regular MIG, uh, but it do, they do provide a really nice um, gas hose for you, which is a nice little added bonus. As far as the claims of being able to TIG, I really don't know. I don't know how to TIG weld personally, and it didn't come with the torch or anything because I believe that comes in a different kit. As far as build quality is concerned, I think it is the type of build quality you should expect for this type of welder at this price point. It's not perfect by any means, but it is definitely serviceable. There are some minor issues with fit and finish. Uh, the crossover cord might be just a little too short to be able to easily change it from one electrode to the other. But besides that, like I said, for the price, I feel like you're getting your money's worth. Now for the sake of full transparency, I do have to let you know that this is actually the second unit that I'm testing from Best Arc. The first unit they sent me was faulty. I reached out to them as soon as I identified the fault. They were super gracious about it. They sent me a new unit right away, no questions asked. Um, and then after they got the new unit in the mail, they did ask me to further describe the issue and actually get video of it if I could, um, so they could take it to their engineering team and make sure that there isn't a flaw in the design. So my concern was I was gonna get the new unit and it was gonna exhibit the same problem, but I'm happy to report that it, the second unit they sent me works perfectly fine. All right, here it is, it's feeding without me touching anything. I narrowed it down to the, I narrowed down the issue too. So 
for some reason it's tied to the cooling fan on the machine. So when you are in MIG mode and the cooling fan turns off, something in that circuit that turns off the cooling fan triggers the feed fun function. And as long as that fan is off, that feed is going. So that's a problem. I did read through all the paperwork and there is no mention of a warranty. Um, if I do find out more about that, I will put a little caption down below that does describe what the warranty is. However, if you do end up buying this through Amazon, you'll be able to use Amazon's product guarantee to return it if there are any problems. So the question is, would I use this unit? And my answer is yes, I actually do plan on keeping this unit and I'm going to use it exclusively for flux core welding. It is so light and small, it would make, it's gonna make a perfect little portable unit that I can take to places. If there's something that I need to weld and I can't, I either can't get it into the shop or it's inconvenient to get it into the shop or it's somewhere away from my home, instead of trying to lug my MIG welder with the gas bottle wherever I need to go, I can easily grab this guy, either by the handle, or it does come with a little shoulder strap that you can attach to it, and I don't need anything else. I plug it into the wall, and I'm ready to go. So that makes it super convenient. The convenience factor alone makes this welder worth the cost of entry. So if you're interested in learning more about the Best Arc MiG-145 welder, or if you'd like to potentially buy your own, I will leave a link down in the description below. If there are any coupon codes or discounts available, I will also put them down in the description below, down near the link, so you can possibly catch yourself a good deal on one of these welders. If you are a beginner welder, um, if you need something that's very portable, something that you can knock around in the back of your truck, um, if you need something that is easy to set up and easy to use, uh, this would definitely be the welder for you. Once again, this is the Best Arc MIG 145. This is the Gen 9 package. The Gen 9 package comes with the stinger for the stick welder. Um, there is a Gen 7 package that is just MIG only, uh, but they are all capable of anything. You would just have to buy the additional accessories to be able to do the other functions. I really hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it informative um, and it answered any questions that you had about this unit. If you have any questions about this welder or my experience with it, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. I do read every single comment that I receive. I want to thank you one last time for watching. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. I will see you guys next time.